Police say Fisher was furious because 38-year-old Joseph Buttafuoco wanted to end their affair. So, two weeks ago, she shot his 37-year-old wife, Mary Jo. Today, the mother of two is recovering at their shorefront Massapequa home. She was released from the hospital yesterday with a bullet still lodged in her head. Well, that was 17 years ago, and now Mary Jo Buttafuoco is telling her side of the story with her new book, aptly titled, Getting It Through My Thick Skull. Please welcome Mary Jo Buttafuoco. <laughs> okay, Mary, Mary Jo. Thank you. We're sympathetic to your case. I have always been. Oh, um, no, I make jokes. Oh, are you kidding? They know your story in Kansas. What are you kidding? I know. I know. Um, what's with the title? How come you came up with a funny title like that? You like that? Yeah. Well, it's an old family joke. All of my life as a kid, I was, I was raised in the 60s. I was a rebel without a cause. And uh, my mom always used to say to me, oh, Mary Jo, when are you going to get it through your thick skull? You can't do this or you can't do that. It was always this exasperated my mom, you know? Uh -huh. And after I was shot, I was in a coma for three days. And when I woke up, I was told I was shot and all in the head and all this stuff. And I looked at everybody and my family was just so, my children were there. And I looked at them and I looked at my mother and I said, see, Ma, this thick skull came in handy, didn't it? <laughs> and that's what my family did. They smiled and said, she's going to make it. And the bullet is still there. Yes. Still there. And they don't remove it because? It's, it went in in the side and did a downward turn and it's like this far from my spinal column mm -hmm. yeah and they saw it they went in there and said it's too close we might right. do more damage so right. they said the Just scar tissue it. felt let it let it so she committed a, really a big crime this girl because oh. it's permanent damage oh, really yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you know, it, it, this book is absolutely fascinating, uh, just about the strength that you've had through this whole orde ordeal. But for those of us who don't know it, which I think everybody does, but for those that don't, can you take us back to that day when that doorbell rang? Yeah, it, it, briefly. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was painting in my backyard, minding my own business, uh, painting in my house. And there was a, the doorbell rang, and I could kind of like see through the house, and I saw this kid at the front door. And I put the brush down, and I walked toward the door, and I started pulling off my gloves. And I said, yeah, yeah, I can help you. And she said, are you Mrs. Buttafuoco? And I went, yeah. And she said, I need to talk to you about your husband, Joe. I was okay. So out the door I went, and I leaned against this little porch that I stood on, and she was, you know, as close as you and I are, Liz and Whoopi. I mean, this one. And I said, what's up? And she said, I want to tell you that your husband is having an affair with my little sister. And I went, your little sister? That was the first thing, because to me, she looked like she was 10. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well. And I said, the first thing says, how old are you? And she goes, I'm 19. And it just went on and on and on. And I just knew she's lying about something. I didn't know what. She gave me a false name, a false address. Everything was wrong. And after about a minute and a half of this, I was like, I don't know what you want me to do about this. I said, I got work to do. I, you know, I got a big painting to do, a big day ahead of me. I'm going to go back and ask. I'll give Joey a call and tell you came by. Yeah. I said, thanks for coming by. It turned like this. I got my hand on the door. That was, the, that was it. Okay. In that, she must have had the gun in her pocket because mm -hmm. I didn't see a gun at right. all. It was in that moment that I turned and got my hand on the screen oh. door that she pulled it out and pointed it at my head and pulled that trigger that quick. And that was, that moment, I mean, obviously changed everything in your life. Yeah. And people since then had painted her as Amy Fisher, as someone who was obsessed, that she had had this affair with your husband, um, and that he had some sort of part in convincing her to do this. Now, it then took you, it was seven years before you decided to leave him, correct? Correct. So why, and I think most women wonder this, and we hear about women who stay in relationships, um, not as extreme as this, but maybe so. Why stay so long and why did it take you right, so first long to leave? I have a little bit of a thick, thick skull. Yeah. Thick <laughs> skull. All right. Other than that, honest to God, I learned I've been married to a sociopath. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean a c wonderfully charismatic, funny. Sherry, you said you talked about a story about how you met him. It was like the life of the party. Oh, yeah. I was saying, I'm, I actually met you guys when I was a stand-up at the comedy store. And your husband uh, was working out there. And he brought you to the comedy store about 11 o'clock at night. And Joey was the life of the party with the comics. Everybody so loved it. But I, I, I was watching Mary Jo, and I kept going, she doesn't want to be here. Yeah, like, wow. you were there, and you so were so uncomfortable. I and just, that was the, and during that seven-year I seven was at the period? time on a lot of drugs then, you know, uh -huh. a lot of painkillers right. then. And right. when, 
I just want to say we had we actually had to contact um, Joey for a statement about your book. Yeah. Um, I've told him all about. This. Yeah, and he just for the record here, I have to read this. I he said I've read the book. My attorneys are reviewing it. While there are some truths in it, there are many, 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 many inaccuracies. I'm writing my I'm writing my own book. I will be out as it will be out soon. And my book is closure. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. And I would even take a polygraph test about everything in my book. Reaction? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'd love to see the results of that. Well, that's a, that's a whole yeah, that's, of the sociopath. That's a sociopath. The they don't right. think they are doing or saying anything wrong. Right. They believe it right. to the death. They will never change. And you go to kids. I, yeah. Oh, my kids are 29 and 26 now. God yeah. bless them. My son is the one. This book came as a revelation in a conversation with my son. And it was two years ago after mm -hmm. Amy and Joey traipsed all over Central Park Holland, and we're going yeah. on a date. Mm -hmm. And I said, yep, yeah, my Paul, my, oh, my angels. They, they're the reason I'm here. And they, they um, hello, where am I going with this? The kids. How Thank are you. They? They're no. good now. Menopause, don't worry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, know, I know. The kids are It good. was my son who said to me, Mom, yeah. Dad is a sociopath. Mm -hmm. And I went like, oh, no, well, you know, he doesn't beat us up or hit. Mm -hmm. He goes, no, Mom, I've looked into this. And it, it stuck in my head. I went to the computer, I looked it up, and I looked at all the traits, and I went, it's like the bulb went off. And I went, mm -hmm. oh, my God, this is what I've been living with all of my life. And I made it a mission to find out everything about it. I talked to people. That's I went sociopath. on and, and right. writing some of the stories of what it made me realize right. that was sociopathic behavior. Mm -hmm. That was so, but I the blamed kids it. Got you through. They the children yeah. got did. you through. And they, they are amazing. marvelous. Well, amazing. you know what? We are we, we want you to come back. This is fascinating. And we are in going to segment. in yeah, the next segment, understand. absolutely. We are going to find out if Mary Jo did forgive Amy Fisher. So come on back with Mary Jo Botafuco in a minute.